On this edition of Fulton at Work, we'll discuss how the Fulton County Police Department is doing its part to ensure the county's finest avoid making national headlines. And whether you're protesting or in the presence of an officer, we're also sharing some very important do's and don'ts. I'm Daryl Carver. This and more is coming up on Fulton at Work. Please stay with us. Welcome to our program. I'm Daryl Carver. In the wake of the deadly events in Baton Rouge, Minneapolis and Dallas, Chairman John Eves held a press conference to assure the public that the Fulton County Police Department is ahead of the curve when it comes to community policing strategies. Now here is a little bit of what he had to say. I'm here to uh, thank our police chief and our personnel for all they're doing. We think that Fulton County is doing a lot of great things in terms of being a diverse workforce, a diverse police force, doing a lot of community policing, and we hope that we can set a positive tone in terms of better parity and uniformity across the county. We have 14 municipalities, and it doesn't serve us well if one entity is doing the right thing and others are not doing as much as they can. So we hopefully will be setting a positive tone. Joining us now to go into more detail about community policing and what's being done to set that positive tone is Deputy Police Chief Daryl Talbot. First of all, Chief, thank you for joining us this morning, today. Well, thank you for having me. What's been the mood of the Fulton County Police Department since the events that happened in Dallas, Minneapolis, and Baton Rouge? As you can imagine, it's, the mood has been somber. Uh, as you can tell, our officers, uh, we mourn the, the lives that were lost in Dallas. Uh, however, our officers still every day don the uniform and go out and serve and protect. I believe that's a testament to their bravery as well as their professionalism. I think when we hear about these incidents and when these incidents happen in several different locations, we kind of ask the same question of our folks here locally, which is what's being done locally to prevent this from happening here? Oh, for Regarding the Fulton County Police Department, we've always been committed to community policing. That, we feel, is the best way to prevent, you know, situations from happening. Uh, we do that through training. For instance, we uh, recently did tr conducted training dealing with youth. A lot of our interaction is with the youth, so what we decided to do is to have someone come in to train our officers on how to deal with that segment of our, our community because quite frankly we noticed over the course of time that a lot of our officers were dealing with a 14 year old in the same manner that they would deal with a 34 year old and there are some nuances there so we tried to tackle that and i know part of that goes into the department's entire philosophy which is building partnerships and solving problems tell us a little bit about that philosophy and those aims yeah because that's part of our our mission statement you know to uh, create partnerships between the police department and the community. Because again, we feel that in order for us to be effective and to provide the services that the community is looking for, we have to come together, have discussions, and to seek solutions. Now, after Chairman Eve's press conference, um, Chief of Police Gary Stiles spoke to our FGTV team about just how unique our county is. And I wanted to play this brief clip for you and then get your thoughts after it runs. Uh, Fulton County is unique in the state of Georgia. Since 2002, when the Board of Commissioners absolutely passed a resolution that said no law enforcement agency in Fulton County would profile by race or gender or age, uh, it wasn't that we were doing it, it was that they were making a statement. We created the first program to document and track everything we do based on our contacts with the citizens. It's called a racial profiling program, or in modern terms, biased-based profiling. Now, really, what are some of the unique challenges as you see it with this particular department and the area that you preside over? Well, in, in terms of challenges, again, our, our challenges are to constantly you know, keep our finger on the pulse of what's going on with the community. That's why communication with the community is, is so important. And through the various programs that we have in the Fulton County Police Department, we think we're 
well suited to address any of the concerns that may arise. Now, from what I understand, you were recently interviewed in depth by Georgia State University. If you can go into a little bit about that discussion in particular. Well, what Georgia State did, we prov they were provided with documentation of our contacts, uh, contacts meaning either traffic stops or other types of uh, contacts that our police department have with the uh, citizens. Um, that information was gathered dating back to 2008. And what Georgia State did was conduct an audit of that data. Uh, let me back up a little bit because the data that they're looking at is the data f from, again, contacts that we make. Uh, as you know, Fulton County, Poli Fulton County uh, has a zero tolerance policy for uh, profiling. And what we mandate that our officers do in each and every contact is to transmit certain data, that data being race, gender and age. With that data, it is compiled and it was presented to the Georgia State University whereby they were able to conduct their audit. Um, and what was determined is that our agency is indeed an uh, agency where we don't have any problems as it re relates to any sort of pro profiling, be it race, gender, or any other type of profiling. And we, we feel very good about that. I was going to say, that, that probably felt as vindication for a lot of your efforts up to this point. What are your thoughts, though, on body cameras? I know a lot of departments are using them to try to diffuse a lot of the, frankly, worrisome interactions that police will have because it is such a dangerous job. Have they helped diffuse situations at all? There are some data out there that suggests that it is helping in terms of lowering uh, uses of force. Um, it also, they also serve as a tool to quickly investigate any allegations. We favor the body cameras. As a matter of fact, we're in the final stages of procuring not only body cameras, but in-car cameras. And hopefully, you know, by the end uh, of the year, we will be able to have those and put those out in the field to each and every officer. Because I know recently both you and Chief Stiles were huge advocates of moving ahead with that program. Please go into one of what's probably one of the most successful programs you've had recently, which is the Coffee with a Cop program. Tell us how it started and what you hope the public can take away from it. Yeah, the Coffee with a Cop program started back in 2011, actually in uh, Hawthorne, California. And in February of 2015, our police department decided to implement that program. And since that time, we've had uh, approximately a dozen events. And what we've noticed is that we've had a huge uh, outpouring of support for that particular program. It's an opportunity for us to interact with the community in, in another manner. Uh, we can address issues. Uh, in terms of participation, we've had numbers as large as, as 300. And the interesting thing is, in the future, we've, we've also been uh, tapped by the Federal Reserve you know, here in Atlanta to also conduct uh, a regional event, and we look forward to doing that. I know another part of that outreach to communities has been the Citizens Police Academy. Tell me a little bit about that program in particular. Our Citizen Police Academy is an 11-week program. Uh, it is comprised of uh, citizens from unincorporated South Fulton County as well as uh, businesses. What the participants do in that 11-week program is that they get the opportunity to see the police department in its entirety. They go through every division, they deal with our SWAT team, they deal with our patrol division, our criminal investigation division, and also our administrative division. Uh, and they get an opportunity to see behind the scenes what is it that we do as a police department, you know, above and beyond just the patrolling aspect. And no, we don't want to leave the discussion just there. We want to continue on with you, Chief Albert. We're hoping in a few minutes you'll be able to share some important do and don't information that will keep everyone out of harm's way. So we'll come back to you after this break. Please stay with us.
Welcome back. In our last segment, Deputy Police Chief Darrell Halbert discussed the county's community policing strategies. Now we're going to ask him about something more specific. That is the do's and don'ts that come with interactions with police, and particularly with protesters as well. What are some of those do and don'ts that people need to be aware of when they're in the presence of an officer? What we try to convey to the public in our interaction with them, uh, we have this discussion quite often. And what you hear us saying time and time again is when you encounter a police officer, uh, some of the things you want to do is you know, remain calm. Um, try not to be argumentative with the police officer. Um, for officer safety, what we enjoy is being able to see the individual's hands. So please you know, keep your hands in, in an area where the officer is able to see, uh, see them. Uh, beyond that, uh, we just want when we're interacting with the individual is when we're asking them questions to also be truthful. You know, those are some of the main things that uh, we try to convey to citizens. I know in the wake of several of these incidents that we were talking about earlier, there, there have been protests. What are the do's and don'ts when they, in particular when it comes to the issue of protesting, especially when in some cases there are streets that are blocked, that, that people still have to navigate around? Yeah, my answer to that is going to sound very simplistic. Uh, we want to people to exercise their constitutional rights. Police officers, in Fulton County Police Department is no different, is that we'll protect people as they're exercising that right. Um, but we want them to be mindful also of the fact that we are here to, to serve and to protect the public as well. So in the situations where they are, if they're thinking about going down a busy thoroughfare, we're going to stop that because we are still trying to protect them. We're not trying to hinder them from um, ex expressing themselves. We just want to ensure that they do so safely. Overall, what kind of feedback have you gotten from the public about the county police department and the job you're doing? It's been very positive. Uh, we attend community meetings quite often, and what you hear quite often from the pub public is that they want more of us. Um, and those are the issues that we've been addressing for some time, and we'll continue to address those issues uh, so we'll be able to provide a very effective and efficient service to the community. And I know community policing is a multi-pronged process, a lot of public outreach. What are your thoughts in terms of what you've been able to achieve through that outreach and through actually talking to these communities about the issues that they're facing? I think we've been able to set a tone in South Fulton County. Um, in terms of the way that the community feels about us. Our ability to have very positive programs, like I spoke to earlier about the uh, Coffee with the Cops and the, um, the, the outpouring of support that we've received behind programs such as those. So we think that as we, if we continue to do that, uh, we're gonna be, move, we'll continue to move in a very positive direction. Is there one community policing program or tool that you found to be exceptionally helpful to have and that the public clearly does respond to in the communities you serve? It's, it's a combination of, of all of the above. I know the community has been speaking with us quite a bit about youth and what we're planning to do is uh, to really implement programs that are geared toward our youth. I know along those lines, one of those programs is the Police Athletic League. I know that's something that I've heard both you and Chief Stiles talk about as being crucial in, ta in communicating with the communities you serve. W what do you hope to gain through that? Well, what we hope to do is to see a reduction in terms of some of the uh, issues that we, we are facing with juveniles, in terms of some of, some of our, our, our burglaries and other crimes that are being committed by juveniles. Hopefully this will give them an opportunity to uh, have, have a path away from illegal activity to something very positive and something that will assist them in their future. What are some of the things you've learned from all of these efforts that involve 
individual interaction between officers and members of the public. You talk about coffee with the cop. I, I know you've you've participated in numerous town hall meetings, whether they be sponsored by a commissioner or sponsored by the department. What are some of the biggest things you've gathered from those meetings, from those individual interactions that you may not have had before, may not have had the knowledge of before? The community provides us with a lot of information, and with that information, we're able to tailor our service delivery in such a way that it allows us to address, address some of the issues that we hear coming from the community. And that, that, that's been very helpful for us. And again, that's why we continue to uh, try to formulate programs where we can have even more community interaction. So, so the, again, those have been very helpful. And the, the best thing you know that any agency can do is to focus a lot more on having that sort of community involvement, that community interaction, because it helps both ways. With those communities that you serve, has it helped? I think one thing I was I wanted to also ask you is, has it helped just in solving of individual crimes, or frankly, in some cases, learning about issues that those communities are facing that heretofore you didn't know about. Yes, again, you know, just referring back to the coffee with the cop. When we're having that event, it's just a discussion going on, a police officer and a community member having coffee together, and that community member is, is providing us you know, with information that we may not have gleaned otherwise. So again, that's been very helpful in, in, in solving some of our cases. And, and we're, we're, we're proud to have that sort of programming. And to wrap up, I mean, over the years, how have you seen the th community policing evolve in terms of its, in its role in your interaction with the community? Well, what we've, we've noticed that a lot more of it is required. So it's always been incumbent upon us to come up with innovative ways to f find that interaction as well as to solve the problems that we hear coming from the community. Deputy Police Chief Daryl Halbert, I'll let that be it. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And we'll be back to wrap things up right after this. That's all of our time. Thank you for joining us for Fulton at Work, and a very special thanks to our guests today. And we want to connect with you online. Please check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm Daryl Carver, and we'll see you next time.